Good morning. Jeff Levy is entering his first season as the head football coach at Mississippi State University. Moving from the University of Oklahoma, where he served as Oklahoma's offensive coordinator, he's no stranger to the Southeastern Conference, having served as an assistant coach on Lane Kiffin's staff at Ole Miss. He is an Oklahoma alum, an Oklahoma graduate, where he played offensive line for the Sooners. He graduated in 2007, moved during his playing time due to injury from an active player to a student assistant within the program. He and his wife, Staley, have a daughter and a son. I, I have a note that while Jeff and his family are all popular within the Starkville community, we've got a source who's told us that Jeff may have become the second most recognizable member of his family as six-year-old Kane this spring and summer has taken Starkville by storm, which includes a resume that's being built around a Mississippi State baseball camp home run derby crown, a youth league World Series title, and he already has perfected the skill of throwing the 20 yard out route. Welcome to the stage, the head coach from Mississippi State University, Jeff Levy. Commissioner, thank you, and, and you were spot on there. Kane, is, uh, he, he has already stole the show. He'll continue to, to steal the show as, as he uh, will terrorize Starkville, Mississippi for, for many, many years to come. I'll piggyback off, off of the commissioner and his opening statement as we started here, uh, I guess, a couple of days ago. But couldn't be more proud to be able to be here, represent Mississippi State in Dallas, Texas, Dak City, uh, obviously, one of the greatest to ever do it, one that absolutely loves his university. So, Dak, thank you, but it is. It's great to be here. It's great to be in Dallas. You look at it, seven months. Uh, been here seven months, and as we, as we got boots on the ground, we said, hey, what are the things that are going to be most important to us to make sure we go have a successful year one, but also find a way to create this great foundation so we have the ability to go sustain? And for us, it was the guys knowing exactly what we expected of them as they walked in the building. Our guys knowing what they were gonna get into, the expectation, the culture. And I could not be more proud as we look up seven months in, getting ready to start fall camp inside of two weeks, and our guys have taken to it. They've taken to it and they've ran with it, and our culture and who we are every single day. And we talk about four things nonstop inside the program. We talk about having fun, being tough, being competitive, and then being accountable. And, and we break those things down in different ways. But for me, having fun in the doing, that matters. We've got 18 to 22-year-old kids that need to have an incredible college experience. These guys need to have a great experience while at state. It's gonna be incredibly hard doing what we do. We understand that. We get to do it with the best and against the best every single day. All right, nobody understands that more than I do, but I want our people inside our building to have fun in the doing. And so when they walk through those double doors every day, they are able to pour into it just a little bit more because they enjoy the people they are, they're around. They know that it's gonna be incredibly hard. It's gonna be incredibly tough. It's gonna be difficult to go do what we, we're gonna do, but having fun in the doing to me and for us as a culture is incredibly important. Toughness, toughness travels. This is a league that is built on toughness. Always has been, always will be. And I love that fact of, of being able to lead our program uh, in a way that creates opportunities to, for guys to be tough. Mississippi State built on toughness and, and edge. And, and those are things that, that I'm incredibly proud of. Competitive, the most competitive league in all of college football. All right, so how many different ways can we create a competitive situation, a co competitive scenario, so that when we get to Saturday afternoon on, on national television, you don't get surprised by a result? So having competitive situations inside of everything that we're doing is a huge part of our program and our culture. And then a culture of accountability, being accountable to the guy next to you. From a staffing standpoint, being accountable to the guy that you're sharing an office with or, or sharing a wall with every single day. 
and doing right by the people inside the building. And I think when you talk about fun and tough and competitive and accountable, then you immediately think about the three guys that I was able to bring with me today. You know, starting with uh, two guys that have been at Mississippi State. They've been through a lot. All right, over the last three years, they come in together, the same class offensive lineman who earns a starting job, played in all 12 games last year. But here's a guy that earned a starting job through spring, through toughness, and, and through this competitive spirit of just getting better every single day. Albert is a guy that embodies exactly what we want in offensive line play and leadership inside that unit. Here's a guy that's a college graduate. He's from Alberta heads to Tampa, now he's made his way to Starkville, Mississippi, and is creating this great life for himself because he invests in himself every single day. Our in-state guy that grew up a bulldog, John Lewis, again, a guy that played 12 ball games for us last year, has some experience, but has earned this starting role through spring football. And he's done it through consistency and toughness and leadership and accountability. And Jay Lou's a guy very similar. We get to town, create a position change for him, not playing on the line of scrimmage anymore, stacking back, playing as a second level player. And this is a guy that has taken it and run with it. And has accepted the change and been a guy that's gonna play at a really high level, but be a huge part of our program as we move this thing forward. I think for all of us, we understand being a QB guy, calling the plays, Getting the right quarterback was something we had to get done. And, and we've got our guy. Now, I could not be more proud of, of how Blake has gone about his business, how he does what he does every single day. I think when you talk about what we're gonna look like from a team standpoint, it's real similar to what we're gonna look like at that position. Toughness, physicality, edge, uh, being able to go inspire your teammates to play better every single day. And, and that's what Blake's done. He's put us in a position to get off the ground the way we need to. And when I watched him play, I said, man, that's our kind of guy. That's my kind of guy. And so having him year one has been huge. So again, could not be more thankful to be here. Could not be more grateful to our administration to have the opportunity to represent Mississippi State at SEC Media Days. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up. Coach, thank you for your opening comments. If you have a question, please raise your hand and microphone will get it to you. Please state your name and affiliation. Grant, Kylie, and Edley will be running the microphones for us today. So... Coach, we'll start right up here in front of me in the front row. Bob. Here you go. Hey, John. Mm -hmm. uh, hey Jeff, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, at a two-parter, if, if that's okay. Um, I, I think I read this right. No returning stars on offense, only two on defense. I know it's a new staff, but how daunting is that? And then I saw this on social media, so it must be true that Nick Saban said he tried to hire you to Alabama when he was at OU. I wonder if you could kind of take us through that. Yeah, part one of the question, you know, have talked about it a lot today already, but, you know, the, the climate of college football, where we're at, the, the portal cycle that ended in December um, was a huge part for, for us having a chance to have success year one. We're talking about our starting quarterback, three of the five starting old linemen, two receivers starting running back. And then on the defensive side, we'll have three starters from the, from the portal as well. So being able to get off the ground was a huge part of it. That's not who we want to be. We're going to create edge and we're going to be able to sustain as a program because we've got great proximity to players. We're going to be a developmental program. Uh, we've got great junior colleges inside our state, which is advantage of and so those are the things that as we move forward, it will look a little bit different. But for year one, we got guys that will go out there week one that have played a lot of ball, just not a lot of ball at Davis Wade. Uh, part two, Coach Saban, uh, just an honor to, to have conversations with him as, as we went through some things. Um, could not be more thankful for opportunity. And, and at the time, it was, it was something where I felt like needed to be exactly where my feet were. And uh, he, he, he did pretty good. Did pretty good. Coach, we'll go over here to our right-hand side about three-quarters of the way back. Hey, Jeff. Uh, John Sokoloff with WCBI-TV in Mississippi. John Lewis is going to be filling a, a, a big void at, at linebacker, you know, with, with Buki Watson and Jet Johnson gone. Obviously, I know you weren't there with those guys, but he's got 
a lot on his shoulders this year. How confident are you that he could step up as a leader kind of on and off the field for this program? Yeah, J. J. Lou's done that. Again, that's why he's here today rep representing us and, and, you know, a guy that he's going to play alongside with. There's multiple guys in, inside that room that are going to give us a chance to create depth. Uh, but a guy that, again, comes to us uh, from another SEC school, Stone Blanton, has played at a really high level, has played inside this league, knows what it's supposed to look like. And uh, he, he's another guy along with some others that will help us uh, fill that void. Okay, we'll go in this middle section, halfway back. Hey, Jeff, uh, George Stoya, Soonerscoop.com. Hope you're doing well. Uh, kind of got a two-part question for you. How did your time under Brent Venables the last two years maybe help you prepare for this job, both under Brent, but also just your time at Oklahoma? And then secondly, what can people expect from Jackson Arnold, somebody who recruited him and, and saw him play this last year? Yeah, get, getting the opportunity to work for Coach V for the last two years, he, he did. He created an opportunity, opportunity for me to, to go back to my alma mater uh, and, and be able to get that thing off the ground with, with him. Uh, a great experience for me is being able to see him do it from year one to year two and being a, this, this great coordinator who had an incredible amount of success and then being able to get into that head coaching chair and, and find ways, man, just to keep getting better. And it was all about what's best for the program it's all about what's best for the people inside our room as consistent of a leader and a man uh, as there is I believe that in all of college football and indebted to him uh, man forever for giving me that experience part two to the question obviously Jackson I think everybody understands who knows that that scenario and relationship knows how I feel about him and and him having the ability to continue great quarterback play at that university which will go over to this section to your right on the right aisle Hey, Jeff, Cedric G Golden, excellent American statesman. Um, you coached and played at OU. You coached at uh, Baylor. Uh, the seasons you spent with Lane Kiffin, what did it teach you about the SEC and, and get you prepared for this challenge? Yeah, I, I've, I think with, without a doubt, just understanding the week-to-week -week grind of it, and have talked about this already today, but, you know, it's not week three, four, and five. It is truly week eight through 12 and, and understanding the, the lines of scrimmage, the depth that you have to find a way to develop through the season to create depth uh, at all positions, but most importantly at the lines of scrimmage is something that uh, is, to me, an advantage because of, of living it. Hey, Coach, we'll go right in front of me, three rows back. Barry. Yeah, Jeff, Barry Trammell, Tulsa World. You're coming into the SEC when it's tougher than ever with OU and Texas coming in, but you're also coming in when the 12-team playoff arrives. Yeah. What does that opportunity do for a program like Mississippi State, which is outside the Alabama-Georgia axis? Sure. You, you don't necessarily have to win the SEC or get to Atlanta to – to make the playoff, what could that do for a program like Mississippi State? Well, I, I think there's nothing but good coming from the the, the um, expanded playoff. You, you know, you have the opportunity to to not be perfect in the regular season and then get in and go chase it and and have a chance to to win a championship. I think for all of college football, the excitement and the fan bases um, for us, as specifically Mississippi State, I think it opens a door and it creates a door, and and we'll always and forever make sure that we're we're talking about maximizing every day, every opportunity, every single season and fighting like heck to be in that top 12. We'll go down the center aisle again. Hey, Jeff, Colin Wilson with the Action Network. Everywhere you've gone, you've had a top 10 tempo pace with your offense, usually about 23 seconds per play. With the new rules of having communication till 15 seconds left on the clock, do you see yourself going, using all 15 seconds, or going even faster to confuse defenses that may have that communication? Yeah, I, th I think a little bit of that is a balancing act. I really do, and being able to still have some ball control and some game control while creating uh, um, great tempo and, and great opportunity through how we play. So we'll never be any different than uh, what we've been from the mindset of, of knowing that we get to dictate how the game is played because we have the football, that will forever be the case. So being the aggressor and being pedal down uh, will be who we are, but being able to change the pace a little bit more, I do. I think it makes it a lot easier being able to have communication. Yeah, we'll go over to this section on, on your right on the far out. Coach, Hunter Dawkins, the Gazebo Gazette, Super Talk News, Mississippi Media. The, I know you raised the, uh, the two terms, accountability and toughness. 
Is this going to follow you as long with recruiting, not only in Mississippi, but along the transfer portal lines? Yeah, we're, to me, you have one opportunity to protect the program, and that is by who you choose to be inside the locker room. And so finding the right people and finding the right guys that will thrive uh, in our incredible college town and our, our community will be forever important because that is how you protect the program and that's how, you know, you protect the pick. We'll go back down to center aisle, about three rows back. Coach, Emily Grace McWhorter from the next round. As you look back at the stops you made before becoming a head coach, what's the best practice or piece of advice that you got to make it to this point? Yeah, I think consistency and being exactly who you are, being comfortable enough in, in your own skin to where when it doesn't go perfect, not changing. Uh, making the changes necessary, but being exactly who you're supposed to be at that moment, uh, because that, that ultimately is, is probably the biggest reason I've gotten the opportunity I've gotten today. Hey, we'll go right down here in front, in the right front row. Coach, good, good morning. This is Terry Middleton from Horns Illustrated. You had the opportunity to go head to head with Steve Sarkeesian last year in Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. What did you learn from that experience from play calling and, and offense that you'll carry into DKR this season? Yeah, I think from a situational standpoint, just knowing that there are so many games inside our league that are uh, decided in the last two to four minutes of, of a game. It's so similar to the NFL, and, and that's a, an, an incredible example of, the, you know, the game is played, there's all four quarters, but is there situational mastery, and can you find a way to make the play and call the play and put your guys in positions of success to go win the game? And, and uh, there's just this heightened awareness to me inside of our league because so many close games every single week. Uh, that was great experience uh, for me. It's great teaching tape for our guys both sides of the ball as, as we go back through that. So we'll go over to our right alongside the near out. How you doing coach? Mark Henry from Hornsports.com. How have you guys as a staff in seven months come in and kind of changed the culture and put your stamp on Mississippi State so far? Yeah, I, I think being uh, incredibly intentional with who we brought into the building. You know, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, I wanted a defensive coordinator that uh, was similar from the standpoint of toughness and passion and edge and having great command and knew exactly who he was and, and, and was a guy that was um, incredibly talented and, and being able to go create this culture uh, in the defensive side of the room and, and, and on that side of the ball. And so we've, we have, we've, we, we've got people inside the building that have great passion and energy for taking young people places they can't take themselves. That to me is what it's all about. And, and we'll, we'll continue to add pieces of the puzzle that way. Which will go right back in front of me, Bob. Um, and I noticed that uh, it seemed like Lane Kiffin had some fun on social media when you got got hired. Maybe you had a little fun back. I was I was wondering what you said about that. And also, you know, we, we covered Cody Kennedy at Arkansas, and you added him. I was wondering what what went into that. And I assume that Kendall Bryles probably had a hand in that. Yeah. Um... A, a ton of respect for, for Lane and, and what he's done, the energy he's created. Um, I'm not going to talk a, a ton about the, the social presence. I'll, I'll let him continue to, to tend to that game. But uh, again, my time there created an experience for me that gives me the opportunity to hopefully be able to create advantage. And, and that's, that's what it's all about for Mississippi State. Uh, the next piece in hiring Cody, yes, he had system knowledge. Uh, he had SEC knowledge. He had great familiarity with how we do what we do with his time with Kendall, which was a huge part of, of uh, bringing him on board. Coach, we'll go back to the center section just to your right, about three quarters of the way back. Uh, Randall Sweet, Sooners on SI. You've obviously coached against Texas a few times. You had some success this season. What do you think, how do you think that's going to help you when you guys head to Austin this season? Just f familiarity, knowing the personnel and, and knowing a little bit about the, the system. And, uh, you know, I do. I, I think from my time before being able to be in Austin and know what that atmosphere is like, um, I, I do. I think that'll be good for us, be good for our staff and good for our guys is just knowing a little bit more what to expect and there not being this incredible amount of newness. All right, we have time for a couple more. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Okay, we have one all the way straight in front of me, oh, towards the back. 
Joe Cook with Inside Texas. Coach, your offense uses extremely wide splits. Your family's offense uses that. How have you seen defenses in the past few years try to counteract those wide splits, especially in the passing game? Yeah, I think we saw it in the Big 12 quite a bit when people started going to a little more to the, the true three safety defense. And, and that was something that uh, we did. We saw a little bit uh, while I was in the SEC and, and, and a few other stops. But that, that's something that's not very popular inside our league, um, that, that hadn't been shown to just take off and, and, and catch here, which uh, will be interesting to see. Okay, Coach, we'll go over here to our right, the section front row. Yeah, Coach Brooks Austin with Dogs Daily. You mentioned the Mississippi JUCOs. I'm curious if the nature of the players available in that pool from junior colleges has been impacted by the fact that a lot of schools are now relying on D1 retreads out of the portal. Yeah, I, I do. I think it's not being recruited as hard as maybe it was once was because of the, the transfer cycles and the, and the portal windows. And again, I'm, I think I mentioned it in here, I've talked about it today, but to me that's advantage us because there's still such great players inside our junior college ranks inside the state, signed a good amount this past year and, and hoping to do so in, the, in this next cycle, which is, is going to be big for us. Okay, we'll go right in front here and run in front of my table in the front row. How are you doing, Coach? Uh, Claire Sandler with a little bit more in times. Coach, you've had some time to work with your team, you know, during the spring, during the summer. What kind of team are we going to get that opening day? Yeah, I think you're going to get a football team that's excited to play, a team that you're going to be able to tell is prepared and, and loves to play the game of football. And, and, and that, that's my biggest thing is when we run out of that tunnel, man, everybody in Davis Wade understanding that we're there with great purpose, with great passion, and, and to be able to go win football games. If you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll get another microphone to you. All right, we'll come back up here from front to Bob. Here comes the mic. Hey, Jeff, I'm not sure you might have ticked off at the SEC office, but noticing your first two road games, I, I forgot the order, but it's Georgia and Texas. I wonder what you thought when you saw that. Yeah, that, again, to me, that, that is part of the league that we're living in, have continued to talk about this. You want to do it with the best. You want to do it against the best. We're going to have every opportunity in the world to show exactly who we are as a program and as a football team. And I, I look at that as, it, as, you know, opportunity for our guys. We'll go back over here to the front row on the section to your right. Yeah, Coach Brooks Austin with Dogs Daily again. You, you meant a headset communication communications was mentioned earlier. You guys play with an extreme amount of pace. Are you guys still going to be using signs, or is it going to be relayed to the quarterback, and then he's ultimately going to have to communicate with the other 10 guys? Yeah, the, there, there will be. There's, there's some operational things that will change, that will continue to change, and I think there's going to be this cat and mouse game as you're inside of a game, if you're signaling, if you're not, the 15-second mark, all those things kind of uh, come into play as you're going to call the game. Which will go in the intersection in front of me, about three quarters of the way back. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge, playing with pace on offense. How much do you have to be cognizant of what it's doing to your defense? And have you been able to find the balance that really works for both sides of the ball? Yeah, I, th I think so. And I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but mentioned ball control and game control. Those two things are incredibly real. Putting our guys in positions of success is what coaching is all about. So that will be, that'll be up to me to make sure that we're living on the right side of that and, and always going to be very aware of it. Okay, we'll go in the center section to your right, about halfway back. Hey, Jeff, George Stoya, Soonerscoop.com again. Um, wanted to ask you about Seth Luttrell. I know you worked closely with him as an analyst last year. Now he's the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. What does he bring to the table as a play caller, and how would you say your offenses are different, you know, spread versus air raid kind of? Yeah, I, I think there's a, a ton of similarities from a, a run the ball first mentality, that, that toughness and the lines of scrimmage. There's a great familiarity from a system standpoint. Some guys that he had hired at North Texas were guys that, that were inside the tree for a long time. So he had kind of made that change. He had made that change and been much more our, our style. You know, he brings a ton of experience. He just brings experience as a head football coach. Uh, he brings great experience as a coordinator and a play caller and a guy that's done it at a, at a really high level. He, he does right by the people, does right by the kids, and he's going to fight his butt off for his university. All right, we have time for one more question. If we've got a question, 
Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. All right, well, back over here, Edley to our left, near the, near the back. Hey, Coach. Keenan Womack, Texas Sports Unfiltered. Um, so the SEC typically in the past has been considered a defensive league, but that seems to be changing over the last few years. We've seen explosive offenses come through. Seems to be kind of your brand of football. How do you think the future of the SEC looks balancing offense and defense? Yeah, I, I think time will tell, but I, there's there's going to be great give and take. There's such great defensive coordinators inside our league, and there's such great defensive players inside our league that I, I never see it truly being lopsided the other way. And, and I, I do. I think that's because of uh, what our league is based on and, and the tradition of it and, and who everybody is. Coach Levy, thank you for your time this morning. Great. Thank you all. Hell State.